Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, for today's quick vid, we're gonna make a little update on my sick Vandas. There were a few of you guys who really wanted to see them, and since there are only two, let's make a quick update. So if you don't remember how they used to look like, check below the description, I'll add a link to the video I made when I received them. And as I was working on them off camera, I discovered that they have, or they used to have fusarium. So their stem was cut quite a little bit. They might be shorter than what they used to be, but they are indeed a lot better. I received these orchids to save. They weren't healthy and then they declined. They were already a little sickly. But I have really good news, they're doing great. So let's start with the first one. This is the Mimi Palmer. And as you can see, we did have quite a lot of dehydration issues. This orchid remained almost rootless. But in the meantime, it did produce some roots, so it is just now hydrating. This is the overall look. Let's get you in closer so you can see some details. So as you can see, the leaves are a little bit closed. This is always a sign of dehydration with Vandas or not enough water. Usually a Vanda that doesn't have enough roots, maybe it has one or two roots, will display this. Even if you water her extensively, some Vandas, not all Vendacious orchids, will display this closing of the leaves. But she is pulling through, I just watered her. And this is one of the roots that is going down inside the basket. We also have another one in the back. Let me make this even clearer for you guys. That one has a growing tip and it is growing. These orchids are doing really well in the setup, in the basket setup. But as you can see, we don't have too, too many roots, the older roots are not looking all that great and at this point whoopsie at this point i'm not sure if they're alive anymore but it's okay we do have quite a few roots growing at the moment and helping this orchid get hydrated even so you can see this orchid is still in shock it's still a little dehydrated vanda orchids don't have pseudobulbs to store water and energy but they do actually store them to a certain extent in the root system and in the leaves so this orchid is on her way to recovery uh, but you can see that she's been through some stuff. Also, another defense mechanism is to lose the bottom leaves, or at least some of them. It's not a sign of rotting or anything. So in this case, context matters. I lost two or three leaves, but uh, things are looking better now. Usually Vanda orchids and other monopodial orchids do this to conserve energy and to protect the crown, to make the available energy be put only towards the upper part of the orchid and of course the root system. So if the orchid has enough leaves, some of them, the oldest ones, which have the more chances to be already damaged and not fully functional, they will be shed naturally. And it can look quite scary because we're all afraid of stem rot, but no, just think about the orchid you have and if it does indeed have reasons to be dehydrated and stressed and want to protect the crown, then uh, there you go, that's the answer. And the other sickly orchid that I received together with the Mimi Palmer is the Vandacostylis colmarie. I'm not sure how accurate the name Vandacostylis is anymore, but let's just call her like that. This is a different type of vendacious orchid. Uh, you can see it looks totally different, but she was in the same bucket in the sense that I cut a little bit of the stem because I was expecting fusarium and I did see the circle. So with this one, I feel like I cut more, but I'm not entirely sure. I cut the stem until I didn't see any more signs of the disease, of the purple circle. And together with that section, a lot of the roots went as well. So this orchid had to produce roots because she was, if I'm not mistaken, rootless or she did have a little bit of a root. So what she did was to create this root, which is just stretching out. And what I think I will do is just get it very, very soaking wet for a few hours to make it flexible and I'm gonna try to rearrange it somewhat because right now it's really awkward, this angle, and it might get broken. I might not be careful one day and I will break it. It's just sticking out way too much. But inside the basket, and I'll try to give you a look, we do have more roots and they are hidden in here, but you can see them. And they're growing. She is doing fantastic as well. With this one, I had the bottom three leaves yet again yellow and fall off. And ooh, okay, this is one of the remains. And this is a perfect subject to show you. Do you see this line? This is where the leaf was attached to the axis and it was severed on its own. The orchid seals up the wound on its own. Whenever leaves naturally fall from orchids, they tend to do that. So no infection can enter the plant. And also this indicates that the leaf fell due to other reasons, not infection reasons. If there was an infection, 
this line right here, now what you see here, this is dirt or staining. So this line at the top would have been brown or dark in color or even black. That is sign of infection. And actually I mean stem infection, a stem rot. So everything is okay if the leaf doesn't have that darkened edge. And if we look closer, again you can see that the stem is clean, there is no darkening, this is the remains of a different leaf, and the darkening can be a little dirt or a little spotting. It helps if you look inside the other leaves and if you see dirt, then there you go. So the stem is clean, the leaf uh, severed cleanly, there is no infection, everything is very very well with the orchid as well. And this one is in a little bit of a better shape because it doesn't have all that many structures as the Mimi Palmer. We can still see some of the leaves are a little closed and that's okay, they will open up eventually when the orchid gets enough hydration. So overall, both of these orchids are doing okay. The methods that I use to root them, I actually don't use any methods. I've told you this before. All I do is offer humidity around the root zone. And I do have a quick vid about that as well, check the description down below, it's called how I assist orchids into rooting. Um, and no, I don't use rooting hormones or other products or things of the sorts. I'm not saying they don't help, uh, I'm just saying I don't see much of a difference whenever I use them. I have great success rate, so I don't feel the need to use boosters, that's why I don't use them, but if you like to use them and you feel like it's helping, why not? Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching this video and suggesting the topic, hope you've enjoyed it and you know the drill, if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up, if you hated it give it a thumbs down, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. P.S. Tomorrow we're gonna do the unboxing, so stay tuned for that. Bye!